Good afternoon, Team Ramstein. I'm Brigadier General Mark August, and I'm accompanied by the 86th Area Left Wing Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Ernie Rendon. Chief and I decided that we would take some time here on Monday afternoon to provide some of the latest information and answer some of the questions that we've seen here on Facebook. We're going to keep working with the right time and the right venue to be able to do this. If the noon time frame isn't good, please give us some feedback on that as well, and we'll find a better time that works for the whole community. But since this will be hung on Facebook for a while, if you are watching live, please spread the word to come by and see the latest news from the 86th Airlift Wing. Since Friday in our radio show on AFN, we've had a lot of opportunity to demonstrate what the 86th is capable of doing. Our mission is in full force across every single group. On Friday afternoon, we launched a C-130J Super Hercules out to Italy to bring badly needed medical supplies and to support our allies and our partners. By Saturday, we were out working with the, our medical group. We've got deployers that are ready to head out if needed anywhere in the NATO, AOR, and certainly here in Europe as well. Their job is to be ready to save lives. On Sunday, one of our NATO allies asked us to put potentially move any war readiness mater material that we have and our logistics group is being prepared to deliver. And in partnership with the 100th Air Refueling Wing up at Mildenhall, we launched a KC-135 with an aeromedical evacuation team to bring patients out of Djibouti. Our civil engineers rolled outside the gate on Sunday as well to respond to a mutual aid request and work with the local community. Our mission support group continues to protect the base ensures our communication stays strong and we continue to support the theater. So some folks might ask, well, why aren't we at minimum manning? Why aren't we at mission essential only? And you can see with just those few examples since Friday afternoon that the base is fully engaged in its professional airlift and its gateway to the world mission. We're needed, we're wanted, we're in high demand, and we have to remember that this is the base's responsibility. This now includes our geographically separated units in Portugal, in Spain, and Belgium as well. And many of you are also aware we had to make some tough decisions over the weekend. We had to close our barber shops in accordance with where the Germans were going as well, and that includes the hair salons. We ended the food truck service and as well as our very famous Fabio ice cream as well. But this I know has an impact across the entire installation, but we realize that our job is to take care of airmen and their families in addition to getting the mission done and we have to be compliant with those German restrictions. And those changed over the weekend as well. The first change was by Friday night. We knew that the Germans were gonna close their non-essential store functions, takeout only, and no gatherings larger than five people. As of midnight last night, we also found out that the Germans increased their restrictions to no more than two people assembling at any time. Of course, there is an exception. If you're in the same family or live in the same household, that doesn't apply. But as Americans living overseas, our responsibility is to comply with the German restrictions. Fines can be levied upon individuals. No more than two are gathered. But that does not mean our mission essential functions. It's really hard to keep a hospital running with only two people or load an aircraft in groups of two. So we're going to keep our mission essential functions. But I do need to ask the entire viewing audience for a little bit of help as we go forward. We get many questions on why the base isn't doing something or why aren't we enforcing something else. I have to say that social distancing is everyone's responsibility. I'll state that again. Social distancing is everyone's responsibility. For those that don't think that this applies to you, it does, and we need your help. Don't stand silently if you see folks that aren't complying. Ask them to move. Make sure that we understand that this is important to the entire base. Social gatherings are not gonna be allowed, and say something rather than just calling security forces. But I'll tell you, things are changing so fast that we have to bring up again, please stay informed. The latest policies seem to be changing on a daily basis. Our Facebook feed is kept current and points directly to the Ramstein Air Base webpage. Please go to the COVID-19 tab. Long policy and guidance memorandum are stored there. We now have English translations of German policies are also there as well. And links to credible sources of information are there. Please refer to all those guidance. And I have to tell you before I end my closing comments is that we're not gonna push through this pandemic by policy and guidance. We're not gonna do it by decree. As a society and a community, we have to come together as a team to stop the spread of the virus. We have to allow our neighbors to recover and we want to return to the lifestyle we once enjoyed just a few months ago. We won't do that at the base level. It's gonna be down to individual units and certainly down to individuals and their families. 
Thank you for your leadership and thanks for supporting the installation. I'll turn it over to the command chief. Hey, good afternoon, teammates. I just really want to uh, reinforce one message in particular, and that is that really what we see today is that we're operating in a contested environment. Uh, I know that having been here for about 18 months, uh, this team of airmen and family members has done a fantastic job to maintain the readiness posture here at Ramstein. Uh, what the commander has laid out really kind of demonstrates why it's important for us to continue to sustain operations. Uh, we have over the weekend and will continue to be called upon to do our job to deliver airlift requirements all across the theater and to support individuals in a time of need. I think that what you can continue to expect is uh, degradation of services and those are the notices that you'll see come from the command team. Whereas many of you may be eager to, to see mission essential designation, or you may want General August or the 86 Airlift Wing to tell you specifically what sort of uh, people need to be on the job, we realize that that is commander's responsibility. Each commander knows for him or herself exactly the number of personnel necessary to execute their mission. So you won't see any of that information flow from the 86 Airlift Wing Command Team. What you will see is the commander making deliberate decisions based on sound medical advice. And based on that advice, you'll start to see uh, a listing of services that will be degraded, much like the barber shops, for example, uh, and some of the other food truck operations. Uh, you'll continue to see that trickle. The other thing that I can promise is that you will continue to see us remain lockstep with what our local government has imposed. The latest requires a two-person concept. We're real familiar with that. If you're active duty and have deployed, I know you know the two-person concept. Uh, so we'll see that that'll continue to be our posture here in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, airmen, family members, this is our new normal for the time being. What I would ask all of you is to stay informed. And just like the commander said, you know very well what right looks like. It's been pushed out. Our public health experts have made it very clear. Remain compliant, take care of yourself, take care of your family and your teammates. So now we're gonna turn it over to a few of the questions. So we'll start here with some hardship. We'll start with Terrell. Is there any way that rooms on base can be opened up at zero cost to the member? And the answer to that is unfortunately no, we can't do that. What we have seen from the Air Force is some great guidance, especially in the financial front to allow individuals um, some per diem authorizations, depending on what your status is, are you PCSing, or did you start your PCS move, or your TDY, or you leave over overseas? I'd ask folks to go back, take a look at the Comptroller Policy Memo that's hung on the on the Ramstein webpage. You'll get a chance to see what your entitlements are, but unfortunately, we can't go to zero on the cost. Yeah, Susan is asking, are there plans to help geographically separated spouses join their families? If not, will we be able to get help stateside for housing and such? This falls squarely, I think, in the exception to policy uh, opportunity that every general officer has here. What I would really say to Susan and anybody else that finds themselves in this situation is make sure that you're having this discussion with your first sergeants, with your commanders, and that you're expressing exactly the uniqueness. Uh, I, I'm in a similar situation. My spouse is geographically separated from me, and my two children are not with my spouse. So I understand uh, for all of you that are concerned that you're living here in Germany in a level three environment, you may have family member who are uh, elsewhere. I understand exactly what that feels like. And I can assure you that if you continue to bring those concerns to your chain of command, there is a mechanism for an exception to policy request where General August, if you fall under the 86 airlift wing, or the first general officer in your chain of command, are, are able to review your circumstances and then grant approval as, as he or she feels appropriate in order to try to reunite your family, your family, or more importantly, uh, allow for provisions for you to travel. All right, so next one up from Jennifer. On April 1st, we'll need to cover both the stateside mortgage and rent here in Germany. Uh, this is an extreme financial hardship. We will get an ETP to PCS to CONUS. Uh, the good news is, is there are some opportunities right now for an exception of policies for PCS. Uh, Chief of Staff of the Air Force does allow that. Um, you can push up an ETP through the first general officer in your chain of command, and we can take a look at that exact scenario to see if we can get you back to the States. 
Now, as we discussed before in the radio show and the previous town hall, be aware that certain U.S. or maybe German restrictions may apply, but the way you ask that question, it is possible to get an ETP. From Jasmine, uh, for those who were prepared to PCS and have already shipped cars, will rental car fees be reimbursed for members who are required to go uh, to work as opposed to telework? Uh, what we do know in terms of compensation is that uh, this guidance continues to evolve and really to benefit you know, our service members that are facing, facing this particular circumstance. Uh, so very recently, there was some command guidance that pushed out that allows uh, CPTS to approve, well, CPTS to execute approval of circumstances where you've been uh, faced to remain in place, uh, maybe you were forced to uh, quarantine, and th so there's a laundry list of circumstances that apply, but ultimately what I would ask you to do is make sure that you're tapping into, uh, you're gonna hear this trend from me often, but talk to your first sergeants. They're getting all of the guidance that's available out there. More importantly, they've got direct links to our finance office to be able to provide you those answers. So yes, there are some opportunities for individuals to receive compensation. How you choose to use that compensation if you're eligible, of course, that's precisely up to you. I don't know that there's gonna be specific authorizations for you to get a rental car to get to and from work. I think that really boils down to community support, you know, so co coworkers helping you out if that's the case, but uh, we we will make sure that you're aware of all financial authorizations that you have and then of course you'll make good decisions on how to use those funds all right so as far as the mission questions go so from katrine are deployments still going and will the return of currently deployed airmen be postponed right now the secretary of the air force has said that currently assigned deployments are mission essential and should be moving forward but that's made a little bit more complicated by what's going on here in europe as sort of the epicenter of things that are going on with COVID-19, UCOM is not pushing folks forward into the theater. More to follow on this one, but right now, if folks are coming from stateside or going back to stateside, those missions are still ongoing. UCOM is still to be determined. Uh, from Larry here, he's curious if space available opportunities to CONUS are impacted. And I can tell you late breaking uh, from the deputy commander out of the Air Mobility Command. All space available travel has, has been terminated, with one exception. So if you're traveling on emergency leave uh, and don't fall under a funded category, and so to explain that, uh, generally that, that would mean, you know, funded travel would be in circumstances where brother, sister, mother, father, or in-laws, brother-in-law, uh, sister-in-law, father and mother-in-law, if there's an emergency medical situation, then in general in the Air Force, you're gonna get funded travel. Under other circumstances, uh, your command, and that depends mostly uh, on the Air Mobility Command standards, they can approve uh, emergency leave travel. So that's, that's kind of a priority one level for uh, AMC Space A travel. That is still a go. Now, some may wonder, well, what about exception to policies that have been approved? We've received recently some feedback for personnel that are in Baltimore and are trying to get back out here uh, and have exception to policies in hand. Uh, we are working that this morning uh, based on the feedback that we received. We believe if members have exceptions to policy, they should be able to travel on Mill Air. So our team is working back through uh, our Air Mobility Operations Wing up to Air Mobility Command uh, to get some clarification on that. But now, of course, is not the time uh, for ordinary leave travel, it's in fact prohibited. So uh, we'll make sure that we engage with the AMC team there to ensure that we've got options for people to travel mill air uh, when they have approved exception to policies. All right, I get the good question from Justin. Any talks of relaxing hair regulations during the lockdown like the Navy did or will the Air Force members be expected to maintain hair regulations from home? Uh, that seems to be a hot topic today. Um, but we know the Germans closed down all the hair salons and barber shops all across Germany, and we've closed them across all of AFES, that's Air Force and Army. So are there talks? Absolutely. Is there guidance yet? Coming soon. Tom wants to know, how, how does the no more than two rule affect mission essential offices? Uh, so that kind of boils down to what we spoke about earlier. 
and that is that both the local government, let me first talk about the local government posture. Uh, so with regard to that guidance, they recognize that mission essential activities, uh, you know, so healthcare, food services, grocery stores, those will remain open. And so if you would imagine, it takes more than two people to uh, run an Etika. Uh, in the same way, it takes more than two people to run our commissary. So don't expect that as long as we've got those services available that we'll have policies that prevent us from being able to staff those offices. So if I bring that then into our core military functions, the same is true. Uh, each leadership team knows exactly what it takes to run their operations. So we're not gonna dictate to him or her uh, how many people they can have at work. What we will tell everyone is that you need to use electronic means as best as possible. In our front office, we use Microsoft Teams. In fact, over the weekend, we used Microsoft Teams a fair amount uh, to dial in, to video in, and to have conversations about our posture on the installation to work through some of the issues that we've got. So we're leading from the front on that, uh, on that particular aspect. We would ask everyone to follow suit, uh, but of course, every leadership team is gonna do uh, what they believe is necessary to continue to execute the mission. All right, on the medical side, from Christy, medical advice uh, lately has been to stay home and limit outdoor activity. Is it okay to run, walk, or bike outdoors as long as we maintain social distance guidelines? Uh, and what's the advice for those living in stairwell housing on base with our own backyard? Um, the good news is, is it's not locked down. And if you decide that you'd like to go for a run or a ride or whatever it is and you're out by yourself or no more than two, Perfectly okay at this time. Uh, if the Germans go to lockdown, we get a lot of those questions as well. That will be an it depends answer, and that will depend on what the guidance the Germans give us. But for now, good to go uh, for you to do those things and, and be outside as long as you're in groups of two or less. Shannon is asking, will service members be allowed to help care for their six spouses and children without using leave? Uh, so I think this kind of falls in that category of the guidance that currently is out there and then how we see that that'll continue to proceed and move forward. I think that there's going to be plenty of flexibility as we move forward to ensure that we do the right thing in order to take care of our community. I, I will tell you that uh, we do have duty status updates that have been pressed out and they're on my PERS and they're available to every service member. Uh, and also, most of those have been pushed out on social media. Our public affairs, if you go to our Ramstein uh, Air, Force, uh, ba Air Force Base page, uh, both Facebook and uh, our uh, webpage, you'll find links that'll take you directly to all of those policy guides. Uh, so there are provisions that will allow commanders to make sure that they afford our service members the time that they need with the appropriate duty status to be able to provide for the medical care as necessary. Uh, so I would say yes, commanders have all of the uh, all of the leeway to make sure that our airmen are able to take care of themselves and their family members. And before we leave that question, just like we said right up front when schools were closing, our expectations is that service members will have the flexibility to be able to take care of their family members. Uh, right in line with what we've been saying about airmen and their families, we will take care of them. The policy is pretty clear on that. Um, take a look at it. You should be able to work with your command team to make sure you take care, stay home and take care of your family. So next question up from Ramsey, are there any positive cases on Ramstein Air Base? The answer to that is yes. Uh, there are two, they're in quarantine and everyone that's been associated with them has been notified. In the category of new policy questions from Kelly, is there a non-emergency number to call to report an American having a party off base? Glad you got that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think that in line, so listen, if, if, if you have concerns, then dial 112, right? I mean, no one is gonna prevent you from calling emergency services. Uh, is there a non-emergency number? No. Um, my advice is knock on the door. Uh, stand far from that door so you're not within uh, six feet of the person who answers it and remind them that it's in everyone's best interest uh, for them to adhere to our public health guidance, you know, and maintain that safe distance. Uh, if that doesn't quite suffice, then bring that information back. Grab the address, you know, let, 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 your, le let, let your military spouse know, uh, let your command team know, and we'll do our best, of course, to reinforce that message. In the end, though, what we really need is, we, we don't need police efforts. What we need is 
uh, compliance. We need, we need our airmen to understand exactly what the purpose is behind why these guidelines are pushed out. We need people to understand what we're, uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And in the end, what we're trying to do is we're trying to lower the curve. And what that means is we're trying to reduce the spread of COVID-19 so that it doesn't outpace our medical capacity and that we're able to take care of our family members and anyone that may be uh, sick uh, moving forward. So it's in everyone's best interest to comply. This isn't a case of uh, you know skirting the rules or pushing the limits. This really is pretty simple science. Uh, it is vetted, it's proven. Watch the news if you wanna see the global impact uh, that we're facing right now. So uh, I don't know how to make it more clearly. Everyone needs to comply with the regulation, or excuse me, with the guidelines and policies that have been pushed out by our local government. And those are the exact same rules that apply both on and off base for military members. So our civil engineer group has some actually great advice. If you're driving through base housing and you get to see the marquee boards, they say, be a good neighbor from six feet away. And I think that actually goes to the second question we have here on the same topic. What's the on-base policy when it comes to social distancing? It's the same as it is off-base as well. Uh, maintain your two-meter spacing. That's recommended by the CDC. That's about six feet uh, away from each other. And groups no larger than two. Uh, Jessica says, I heard that on the American military bases in Italy, uh, Polizia uh, are carbonary uh, are being given access to patrol and ticket people as they see fit during the lockdown. Uh, will that happen here with our bases and the Polizia? Uh, I'd like to, I think, first point out the big difference between um, you know bases in Italy and bases here in Germany. Uh, so uh, Aviano, for example, d doesn't belong to. Uh, to the general officer who is the commander of the 31st fighter wing. Uh, that is a uh, Italian base, much like Turkey, for example, the 39th air base wing uh, runs and operates that base, but it belongs to the Turks. And so uh, Germany, our posture here is a little bit different. Now we'll continue to work co cooperatively with, uh, with our local government. And I think that's also why some of you may notice some significant differences with what we're seeing at other locations vice what we see here. Uh, here on Ramstein, we ask that you continue to uh, abide by the guidance that's been pushed out from the German government. Um, I, I would assume if we get to a lockdown posture and we get to the point where uh, we'll have to ensure some compliance, uh, General August, informed by many people, will make decisions on how to best execute that. Will we see Polizei on base uh, giving citations to service members? Uh, highly unlikely. I, I, I can't imagine a scenario where that would happen. Would, would we see some either community or uh, 86 Security Forces squadron efforts to help on that regard, potentially. Uh, but I think that if the question is, would we ever see police services that are enforcing some of these lockdown standards, uh, I would expect that you would see blue suit airmen doing that before you see Pulitz High. Our relationship with the local community is excellent. We were Friday, we were on a teleconference with the county commissioner. Great opportunity for us to highlight what's going on on the base. Uh, we want to be good partners, we want to be good neighbors, and we want to be good friends on that as well. But this does lead to the next question as well from Ann. If when there's a lockdown, will we still be able to use our fenced-in backyards on base? Hard to say without seeing any guidance on the lockdown, um, but in most cases from what we've seen thus far is that you're limited to a certain distance from your house. So the answer was likely yes, but more to follow in case we get lockdown guidance. Paul's curious if drivers, or um, excuse me, if drives for pleasure are allowed, uh, if you don't get out of your car or go for a stroll alone uh, or with one other family member. So uh, we're not in a lockdown. Uh, what that means is that if you're out driving on the roads, I think you're safe. No one's going to stop you and ask for your authority to move. Uh, and so uh, I think that being able to, you know, do the things that you need to, and I'm glad you kind of asked this question also because it gives me an opportunity to speak to an area where we are concerned. And I think that whether it's get out and drive, you know, with your spouse or with your family members, or I'll tell you today, I was out on many trails with my dog and I saw plenty of couples and families out there that were doing the same. Uh, so let's make sure that we take advantage of every opportunity that exists to stay within the boundaries of what we're given due to public health guidance, 
uh, but also take care of our mental health. You know, um, it's going to become incredibly more stressful for those of those of you families who are dealing with uh, suddenly you become online teachers uh, for, for your students. I know that that can be stressful. I also recognize that it can be stressful to not have the normal outlets that, that you have, you know, um, whether it be travel. I tell you, it seems like Germany's had some of the most beautiful days lately, you know, and I know it can be difficult. For me, it's golf. And, and so uh, I was in the backyard doing a little chipping after I cut the lawn yesterday. So I would encourage all of you, uh, have your outlets, stay within the boundaries of what's permitted. Right now, taking a drive along country roads is A-OK. -okay. Uh, continue to find ways to maintain your own health, both mental and physical, and I think you'll be just fine. All right, so Luke and Anna have got a few questions. Um, we'll try to get through some of these. If a non-DOD affiliated family were to need emergency medical attention, where should we take them? This is probably a question that's probably better suited as you look toward the embassy. Um, those travelers who are not DOD affiliated should have international health insurance that went with it before they came over here. Um, primarily, you're going to end up going off base, but you're going to have to work with the embassy in those types of cases. If travel restrictions were kept in place for months, how would that affect their visitor status in Germany since they might be here longer than 90 days? Unfortunately, I'm also going to have to refer you over to the embassy on that one. How are they going to work folks that are stuck here uh, for more than 90 days on a tourist visa? Non-family question. If we're going to mail things from the Ramstein Post Office, how long do you think it will take for items to be delivered to the U.S.? That's a good question. We know due to additional screening, due to the decrease in number of flights that are going to and from the United States, and that includes shipping as well, we expect that things are going to take longer. Um, but since we're just starting to see the reductions in flights and the, and the adjustment in shipping routes, this is going to take a little bit longer for us to get a really good estimate. But plan on more time shipping to and from the U.S. So Tara is, is uh, asking a question that's probably on many of your minds, and that is, uh, is, there, is there any way that we can please have command-sponsored college students exempt from requiring an ETP? Uh, under current policy and guidelines, the, the simple answer is no. Uh, so funded travel, right? So if the government is funding travel, then ETPs are still required uh, because we're, we're in a level three environment here in Germany. Uh, then the only way to get funded travel uh, for anyone really uh, is with an approved exception to policy signed by the first general officer in your chain of command. Um, other travel, non-government funded, uh, of course, then falls under uh, your own personal discretion and also, uh, you know, government, state, and uh, other factors that are in place with regard to restrictions. And so I, I would encourage all of you to make sure that you're going to state.gov uh, and that you're also looping in with your individual, you know, nation uh, rules in terms of what they're allowing for res or what restrictions they have for travel. So make sure you're well informed. But a simple answer to your question is unfortunately th at this time, funded travel requires an exception to policy. And that is coming from Secretary of Defense level. So that, that isn't uh, parochial with each particular service. This question is near and dear to my heart uh, because our son in Texas was kicked out of his dorm room last week as well. So we had to figure out a way to bed ours down. And so there's more guidance that's coming out on this. You should be able to travel back to Germany. This falls under the family hardship clause. It also falls under SOFA status. There's a bunch of exemptions that are out there. If they have their DOD ID card, if they've got the SOFA stamp in their passport, if they have their parents' orders, which assigns them to the country of Germany, that should be sufficient. But if you look around some of the Facebook comments, it's not quite uh, unilaterally or universally upheld at this point. Um, the embassy is working on that specific issue today in addition to a few other immigration issues. Please stay tuned. As soon as we've got something more definitive, we'll push that out. But that's certainly near and dear to our hearts as well as to make sure some of those college students that are trying to get back and rejoin with their families, it, that's key. All right, now totally shifting gears over to AFI's and, and BX questions. So from Dave, why are some stores in the KMCC still open? Is it possible to close down the KMCC except for purchasing essential items only? So I think if you go through, you'll see some of the stores that were shut down as of this weekend that you will see a lot of the other stores are now closing. Everything from the Hofbrau House to Birkenstocks and everything else, all that's closed. But I want to answer that last question about closing down the BX with the next question from Yolanda is, please don't close down the BX. 
While preparation is key, some of us work very odd hours and are mission essential. The stores in town are closed on Sunday. Please have an option available to us. We actually talked to Carl, the AFES manager, and you can see the military clothing store and AFES BX will continue to stay open with their published hours. Mission essential items will be there, but as we talked about in opening comments, it's your responsibility to maintain the social distancing as well. Switching to DECA. Yeah, this has been uh, um, on people's mind o over the weekend a fair amount. And so, uh, Chister, I hope, I hope I've uh, pronounced that correctly, and Chanel uh, would like to recommend some store, uh, for us to incorporate some measures from stores in Korea uh, to minimize people in the commissary. They limit shoppers by assigning scheduled days for shopping according to family name. For example, all families with last name starting from A to E can shop Mondays, F to J, Tuesdays, and so on. They also limit one person uh, for family only. Uh, you'll see uh, today, if you go to the commissary, there's already some measures that have been taken. Uh, in particular, there are no more baggers that are going to be operating inside of the commissary. Part of that is to avoid contact. You know, uh, you know, if you've been to the commissary, baggers are kind of right where you're going to pay for, uh, you know, f for your groceries. So uh, our mission support group commander continues to work very closely with our DECA team, uh, exploring what options are available for us to continue uh, you know, to provide uh, the, the, the critical service that we need uh, in the commissaries, but also to provide max distance uh, standoffs for people. So, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of exploring right now, maybe changing the, the path of, of travel through the aisles, kind of just one-way traffic, you know, snaking around there, a little Ikea style. So um, if you like shopping Ikea, that might be some, something that we see coming in here real soon. Uh, but just know that we're looking at each of those measures right now. As you would imagine, the community that our commissaries serve here is rather large. So we're, we're ensuring that uh, we're really deliberate about the decisions that are being made there and recommendations to the general uh, so that we're able to meet the community's needs, but also uh, help people uh, remain protected. What I will foot stomp, though, and continue to repeat is you got a choice. You know, I mean, when you're in the commissary, whether there's two people in there or 200, uh, just know that if someone is encroaching in your space, you can take a half step back, right? So make sure that you're doing everything you can to protect yourself in any environment to include the commissary as we continue to look at measures that we can implement across the board to help with that. From Daniel and Kevin, are there volunteer opportunities to help the commissary restock supplies or other ways to help? That's a great question. We get a lot of uh, interest in, hey, how do I volunteer in this crisis? Uh, it's, I think it's part of in our, in our national culture as Americans to want to be able to help. I would argue that's a big part of the 86 Airlift Wing mission is to be ready to respond to humanitarian assistance requests. Um, as far as restocking at the commissary, right now they haven't asked for that type of help. The shelves are well stocked uh, with the manpower they have, but more to follow if they need that uh, particular capability. And we'll get that posted where everybody can find it for those volunteer opportunities. Yeah, so um, Michelle, you're wondering if, if we turned in a student's blue sofa card, uh, can we get them issued a new card so they can fly home to Germany? Uh, the best advice that I can give you in this specific question is we need to reach out to FSS. So uh, the passport office, we have pushed out and through our PA page, you can see how to reach uh, the, the military personnel flight. And I'm not a personnelist, nor do I pretend to be an expert in A1 at this particular moment. So what I would highly recommend that you do if you find yourself, that's a pretty specific ask, uh, reach out to our uh, FSS military personnel flight and uh, make sure that you ask for somebody from our passports office and then ask them that very specific question uh, with regard to how we can execute. What I can also do is when we wrap up here, take that question, funnel it through to our mission support group and see if we can make arrangements to get you an answer. Uh, but please continue to feed those questions forward uh, so we can uh, deal with each of the unique circumstances that you, you may be facing. Next one up from Jillian. Why is the CDC still open to train and clean? Are there plans to authorize admin leave for CDC workers? This is a great question. One of the things we wanted to work on when we started to close both the schools and the CDCs was to find a way that potentially we could support some mission essential functions um, to have people still be able to drop off their children if you're in a mission essential status. 
we kept the CDCs open and individuals there. The admin leave is actually much, much harder at this point um, because we're still following OPM guidance on what's available, what's not available, telework options. More to follow on what we're going to be able to do with the CDCs, and it's going to involve or evolve as uh, time goes on with this pandemic. Uh, so, sir, I know that in the answer, pass answer, uh, I'm next, but I know that this uh, local national teleworking is an area where you've been working very closely with uh, with our legal office, and uh, I'm going to defer to you. So this is me punting right back at you to, to uh, give your perspective on this one, sir. He's a good teammate. Um, yes, we're working on that. It's a priority for this week. It's much more complicated with the different German Works Councils, the, the different shop agreements, the two different groups that are involved. And since it's an international agreement in many ways, this takes a little bit more time. You'll have some answers this week as I get a chance to talk to the Works Council presidents uh, as well. Thanks, so I'll even do the last question too then since you handed it over to me. So from Angela, are there plans at the VCC, the Visitor Control Center, to stop sign-ins for visitors? Not yet. Um, we're still at a place where there are some opportunities for folks to be able to sign on. Um, we're still at HBCon Bravo, so we're still in a place where we feel that we can do that. It's up to airmen to understand who they're signing on in these small groups if you're really going to be able to sign one person on to be there with you. Um, but you're, it's going to be up to them to make sure everybody is in good shape. And based on feedback from our last one where we had a lot of folks in front of the camera and we were pretty close together, uh, you can be assured on this one we are not quite two meters apart. We're a little closer to three feet apart. But the microphone has been disinfected, and we do spend a lot of time practicing good hygiene here for the team as well. Um, but I do want to end not just necessarily on a light note, but really a message for the entire team. I can certainly say for the entire team here at Ramstein, 2020 and this pandemic that we're facing has been an interesting challenge that nobody in the leadership and chain of command really expected that it would play out this way. Operation Varsity really gave us an opportunity to test the skill sets that we would need, really almost for us operating in a, a contested or even a denied environment. And it's great that I actually get to announce right here on Facebook Live that unless somebody is truly interested in doing Operation Varsity 20-2, I think we're in it right now. I think we started a little over two weeks ago. We're not going to do a 20-2 because I think we've learned the skills and we're daily, actually we're hourly exercising everything we need to do what we get out of a varsity. But it's important to realize that even though we're not going to exercise, our mission continues. The nation will continue to call upon us for a unique expertise. Sometimes that might be a gray tail with a big US flag. It might be somebody with an MED on their OCP tab. And it might be us delivering war readiness material to a nation, a NATO ally in need. To our team, we're here. To our community, we stand with you. To our nation, we're ready. We'll be on the radio on Friday, so the questions we didn't get to here, please keep them coming. We'll get a chance to, to be on Eagle AFN, so get a chance to tune in and listen to our witty banter live as we get a chance to go through some more of these questions and work with the AFN team. But most importantly, some of the specific issues you have are things that we're able to push up to the MAGCOM and to the big Air Force team so we can get the policy that we need. But most importantly, thank you for your leadership during these times.